if you're new here, hit that like button for your girl. Join the fan bam. Comment down below because you know I want to know, honey. So it's a first. I haven't done a breakfast with bang in ages. <laughs> I can't remember when it was the last time I did a breakfast with bang. So get you a drink, get you a snack, and come on and join your girl. And how to back with me. Because you know I know what time it is on this channel. So today, y'all, uh, we had breakfast and we are eating some corned beef hash. I have me an avocado and I have me some a fried egg and some scallions. Thumbnail. All right, let's get into the blessing. I have my iced coffee. I already made it. <laughs> I have my iced mushroom everyday dose coffee per period. Dear Lord, thank you for this food that we are about to receive in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Amen, y'all. So I saw a couple people do a breakfast mukbang. I saw it's the East Picky Palette. Hey, Auntie. I saw the Room Lady Raider ASMR. She already knows I was going to do a video, a different video than this. But it's been a lot going on, so I have to get y'all updated on what's going on in my life. But yeah, we're doing a different video than that, sis. So I have me some Thai hen. Go get you some. It's really good. I put it on my avocados, I put it on my eggs. It's good on fruit. This stuff is just really good. And it's healthy for you, it's really good. I got me some Louisiana hot sauce. Go ahead, I wanna get you some. I got me some tomato, some high tomato ketchup. Yeah, if y'all really wanna know what's going on, make sure y'all follow me on Lifestyle Travel Diaries. And that's where I post everything that I'm doing. Uh, my life, my daily life. Um, my ups and downs and all that. So make sure you uh, follow me over there. You're gonna need more views, okay? I'm not monetized yet on that channel. So help your girl out, share me out. And share this video out, share me out, share me out so everybody you know. Period, hit that like button, it's free, don't cost you nothing. And press that bell notification for future videos. Wah, wah. And comment down below because you know I wanna know, honey. But yeah, I wanted some really good corned beef hash because it's been a minute since your girl has some corned beef hash. Okay, I'm trying to tell you. I like ketchup. What do y'all like on your corned beef if you like corned beef? Some people don't like it's processed. You can make it like homemade. You can make it processed. Some people don't like, like it processed. But it is what it is, honey. All right. First bite goes to you. All right, my turn. Mm. I've been watching people sit in front of the couch, right? And I just be like, I don't know how they be doing it. <laughs> but we're doing it in its Indian style today. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And I didn't feel like getting no fast food. Okay, look at that. I felt like having a good home cooked meal that I made. Right at home, period. Mmm. So good. Mmm. Look at that fresh avocado. It's green. That's how you know it's fresh. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I used to see my sister girl more eats <laughs> instead of from the couch all the time, but you know, I, I live with people. Well, she does too. But you know, it's hard to do stuff, record videos in different parts of the house when like other people are there. Y'all can get you some everyday dose, everyday dose coffee. It's so good. I had rice, but it really upset my stomach. And it made me go to the bathroom too much. And then it hurt my stomach when I had to go to the bathroom. I was like, Duh. this is not for you, girl. Mm -mm. At all, period. So in May, I'm trying to have a post schedule in May. We'll see how this goes because you girl, you know, you girl post whenever I can. <laughs> whenever I get some time. Yeah, they're like, you want to employ? You should have all the time in the world. Um, it's different, Shadi. When you live with people, it's different. And um, you need money, saying that your girl not getting unemployment right now. So, 
You need money to do what you gotta do. And fast food is expensive, okay. When we go out and do these reviews, that food is expensive as hell. I spent $15 at Taco Bell when I did that burrito video and that cantina taco. Your girl spent like $15. Why? I could have went and got me a bottle or something for that much, but cheaper than that. Mm mm. But y'all, you girl. Y'all know I had an interview, right? I really didn't get a job. I was really disappointed because I really put my best foot forward. And I've been looking for like a permanent job since May of last year. But it's okay because I'm kind of like being on foot and I know I'm going back to school. And it's just disappointing. And I also know that I'm not the only one in this situation of finding a job. People have been getting laid off, fired. Um, they've had to quit, you know, for certain reasons. I mean, it's a struggle right now. The job market sucks at the moment. I, the job market really sucks. I thought I had that job. But, you know, I was really disappointed because they always say that they want to train you. But they always, I feel like they be lying because they always pick somebody with more experience than you. And the people don't even stay that long when they hire them. It's like, what a woman. You say you want to train people. You say you want people that are trainable i'm trainable as hell i'm trainable okay i know how to be professional i know how to dress i worked in an office before and that's i work remote i really do enjoy working remote but then i also like working in the office like receptionist type front desk i've done it all though and i was talking to somebody else and she was saying that you know maybe you know start small you know, I've always, I've already, your girl has already worked fast food. I don't work so many fast food places. I lasted one week at McDonald's. One week. First of all, they kept saying the N-word. These white people kept saying the N-word. I didn't like that at all. I left. Mm-mm. I had to go. And these was country folk, okay? Maybe that's why. But you know. <laughs> I like fat. I like to eat fast food, but it's not for me as far as working there. No, I worked in a grocery store before. I did overnight stock at Walmart. That was nice. That was okay. That wasn't too bad. It was overnight. I usually don't have to deal with like a lot of customers at night. Well, there's that. And then. I like people, I like your girl like people, but I, I'm also an introvert. I don't know how to explain it. I like people, but I don't at the same time. <laughs> like, I don't like to deal with the BS, okay, and the drama. Like, I just want to do my job and go home. That's it. Period. But y'all, it's, it's been a struggle trying to find a permanent job. I'm like, okay, at this point, I don't tell my friend Sixty Charles, that's says sticks. At this point, well, he has a real name, but... <laughs> Your girl feel like giving up at this point. Ugh. Like, I'm in upstate New York. Is it bad where y'all are at? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, how is the job market where you at? Like, I know certain places you can just walk off one job, leave one job, and go to another one. Now, it's not. Might be. It's not the case up here. Where I'm at. But, you know, God has put you, put you in a waiting period. But then I also feel like I was telling so my, my family, I was I also feel like we're Christians. As Christians, if we read the Bible as Christians, God is supposed to give you what you want and you need. When you want and when you need it. But no, he does not do that. He comes when he pleases. And it's like, dang, why everybody else who's not saying do what they want first and then we got to wait for shit. We have to wait for stuff. I really don't understand that. And it's like, we have to struggle to get what we want. And we have to work hard to get what we want. And other people just get it like that. And they're not, they, I don't know, it's like, they don't not, they not even say, it's like, how you get what you want first and I gotta wait. Like, I've been waiting for the, this permanent position. Like, I've had permanent jobs before. I really had, you know, you can't help when you get laid off or like, you know, the company has cuts. Like, um, I was hearing 
in the news. Who was it that's having cuts? The VA. The VA is having like job cuts right now. They don't do shit for people anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -mm. They was having job cuts and I forget how many um, job cuts they're having, but that sucks. Well, that, I don't know. If you're in the government and you, you can find a job easily, like if you're a veteran or if you're in the military. So, but I'm not. So, and I don't have college. I have college, but guys, I'm not going back to school to get my TV. So I have college, but I don't have a degree. And I've seen some people have degrees and they working at McDonald's and stuff and they're not ashamed at all. I'm going to say, you better get your money. Shoot, I might go ahead and get me a little job at Starbucks because you know they get, um, they get really good insurance over there at Starbucks. I'm trying to tell you because there's this one famous actress and she had one lot of money. I forgot her name. And somebody saw her at Starbucks and he recorded her, which I thought was rude as hell. And he was like making fun of her on camera. And I was like, but she making her coin. She she gave that money to her family to support her mama and her family. If y'all know what I'm talking about, she's black. But <laughs> I forgot her name. But she won a whole bunch of money in, in the contest. And um, she gave that money. It was like $10,000 or something to support her family. So that's why she had to go get another job. But you don't, you don't knock somebody when they already down. And at least she's trying. At least we're out here trying. At least I'm not just you know, sitting at home doing nothing. We're not trying to reach out to recruiters and things of that nature because it's hard. You know what I mean? It's really hard to keep going. <laughs> keep going in life and just say, okay, this one didn't work out. Let's keep going. The, you know, the next one will work out, but it's hard Like after you keep getting rejections at the rejections at the rejections and then you're just like oh what's the point <laughs> what is the point anyway of even trying you know what i mean but i'm in my waiting period so you know i just been learning about myself i'm gonna be like in the next interviews you know i have like different answers and things of that nature and i don't want to be a hired manager because it might be hard to it's hard to pick and choose who you want because you have to let people down you know and I'm pretty sure like she didn't want to let me down or whatever but it's fine we're gonna keep trying I applied for four more positions at the hospital so we're just gonna treat in, in everywhere else I've been hitting up recruiters on LinkedIn everywhere really indeed indeed has a lot of scammers though so you have to watch out for scammers. There's a lot of scammers on LinkedIn. There's scammers everywhere. Cause you know the recruiter don't email you from an email that has an email with the company name on it. If they email you from like a Gmail account, they fake. Mm -mm. And when y'all go out here and apply for jobs, y'all probably already know this. Apply on the company website because you see these. Um, you see these uh, ads pop up and you're like on oh, Indeed or Easy Apply. Mm -mm. Don't do that. I've done it before and it could be scams. It could be a whole bunch of scammers, honey. Like, I got I got scammed one time and the guy was like, I applied for this company and the guy was like, had me message him on Skype or something. And then he was like, okay, well, we're going to send you, I thought he was going to send me the equipment, right? The computer and all that. Yeah, and, and uh, do with like an Apple computer or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. So I gave my address, and then you know, a week later, whatever, they sent me in the mail a check for four thousand dollars. And I was like, and it was big as hell. It was huge. <laughs> and I was, really was gonna do a video on it, <laughs> but I decided not to. A four thousand dollar check, and I was like, uh, I told my dad he was alive at the time. I said, no, this don't look right. So I took it to the bank. But it went, it went cash in the ATM, right? So I went inside to talk to the manager, and the manager was like, "This is a fake check. You go, you're um, they trying to um, have you commit fraud because your um account is gonna get bounced." I'm full, y'all. I can't even lie. Who I'm full? Um, that's really good. Oh my god. And I was like, 
For real? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, don't cash this at all. So then I went back. I messaged the person. I was like, no, you're scamming me. This is a scam. And I just blocked them. And then I called the company. And the representative who answered the phone was like, um, yeah, we've been getting a lot of scams. Uh, people scamming people, saying that they work for us, but they really don't. And things of that nature. It just happened like four or five years ago, y'all. It hasn't, it hasn't happened since because your girl, she's very aware now. <laughs> but yeah, that happened. And um, I thank God that I went inside and talked to the, the manager at the bank uh, where, I, you know, my bank is at. Because I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not cashing this for a check for what? Like, uh-uh, no. <laughs> Had me trying to um, commit fraud or something like that. Mm -mm. Nah, but your girl's gonna find a permanent position. I'm really more focused. I love money, y'all. I like money. I need to save and get out of a little bit of debt that I got going on. It's not a lot. But your girl wanna save for her future. And I've never thought that I would be in this position. But it's okay. I feel like, but I have a lot to be grateful for. Sometimes you gotta count your blessings. I got a roof over my head. I got clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, food on my table. I have a full food, a pantry. You know, me, my mom, my family, we have food for the pantry in the kitchen. You know, we have a backyard, a front yard. <laughs> we have cars. We can drive to interviews and go places in. So, you know, not all is not lost. Really, when your waiting period is to help you better yourself and help you count your blessings. Because when we're working, we don't even think about, you know, God help me do this, God help me do that. You don't even think about that, you know, at this point in time. But at the end of the day, it's like, when you do have money and you have everything that you need, don't forget about God either. I was mad to tell him yesterday. I said, why me, Lord? I put my best foot forward. I, well, I really did. And I felt like I should have got that job for real. I felt like, but maybe God saw something like that I didn't see. And he was like, no, this is not for my girl. This is, this is me. You know, this, it was dealing with, um, I was going to be working in the office around people with HIV and AIDS and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with them at all. We were working behind glass, uh, glass walls or whatever in the office. But it's just like, God has something better <laughs> for your girl. <laughs> and I love helping people. So it doesn't matter, like, you know, everybody's different. You know, you may have something, you may not. It's different. So your girl's going to, I'm just going to keep enjoying life. And we have setbacks. We have setbacks. And I was listening to, I was listening, I was watching Sarah Jakes Roberts um, Sunday on Mother's Day. And she did this sermon. And she preached on John 4, um, verse uh, 25 through 31. And so, God, I pray that you would stretch me, expand me, that your people may be served. And, God, I pray that where there is discord or division in this room, that this would be an opportunity for divine encounter in which these, your sons and daughters, would see you more clearly. And as a result of seeing you more clearly, that they would see themselves. God, I pray that you would allow me access to all of heaven's resources, wisdom, prophecy, strength. And what I know about motherhood is that you do the best you can and you aren't always sure what the results are going to be. But what I know now that I am learning as I'm raising my adult children and even my younger children and still being parented by my mother is that though a mother's job is never done, God makes up the difference for where we fall short. All we have to do, I wish I had some witnesses in here. Baby, God makes up the difference. And so I just want to remind you, whether you're in a partnership or a single mother, that the presence of God is with you as you're making these decisions, as you're raising your children, as you're healing and hoping not to inflict wounds on them. God sees your heart. So do the best that you can and trust that God will make up the rest. I also want to say to go after the resolution we need. So I have to see conflict as an invitation for sure. But then I have to be willing to do the work to make sure that we have agreement on what the conflict is. Because where there is no agreement, there will be division. And where there is division, there will be destruction. This is why when Paul is building the church, Paul makes it a point 
to tell Ephesus. He makes it a point to tell Philippi. He makes it a point to tell the church in Corinth that you're going to have to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Make sure that you are of one mind. You're going to have to make sure that you live harmoniously amongst one another because what you're building can fall apart if you don't keep agreement. It's not that you won't have conflict, but we got to make sure that we keep the same mind. We got to make sure we keep the same spirit. That's how we blended the family. There would be moments where we would have conflict with the children. We wouldn't address the conflict with the children. We'd go and huddle with one another because we got to make sure that we have agreement on what the discipline should be. We got to make sure that we have agreement on what's right and what's wrong. And then once we have agreement, we can build this family because we're going to set the tone on what is acceptable in our family. So we got to be in agreement. If you're going to build the ministry, you got to be in agreement. If you're going to build the marriage, you got to be in agreement. It doesn't mean there won't be conflict, but we got to be in agreement that conflict cannot stay in this marriage. We got to be in agreement that conflict is not something we sweep under the rug. We got to be in agreement that if we need therapy, we got to go to therapy. Where there is no agreement, there will be division. And her message was the power of agreement. And what she was saying, I'm going to put the link in the description box below for y'all. I sent it to some of y'all, but you know. But what she was saying is you have to be in agreement with the Lord to get your blessings. So if you're not in agreement with God, you've got to be in agreement with something else. <laughs> if you get what she's saying. So in order to be in agreement with the Lord um, to get your blessings, you have to compromise. And you have to compromise God and you have to make sure that Everything is in alignment. So with that being said, y'all, that's it. That's a post. That's it. That's a post. If y'all made it this far in the video, comment down below and say, sis, I'm the real MVP because you know you are the real MVP, honey. And your girl got to go. Peace, love, and hair grease all day with David, baby. Y'all know what to do. Hit that like button for your girl. Hit that bell notification for future videos for my. Comment down below because you know I want to know, honey. And your girl got to go. Eee.